pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. Again, today I say rather welcome to our next ap episode of Pastor's Corner. Today I'm your host, Pastor Samora Best, and we would be looking at the topic growing in Jesus, or growing in Jesus. And today with me in studio, uh, we have two wonderful men of God, and these men would be here answering those wonderful questions as we discuss this all-important topic. But before I introduce these men, these wonderful men of God, I want you to do something for me. I want you to call a friend. I want you to tell them that Pastor's Corner is on. I want you to like and share the link. Subscribe so that every time we go live, you can get that notification. Um, I would like you to, as I said, share the link so that persons can also be blessed by today's uh, topic, by today's discussion. And so that is what I want you to do for me this morning. And I'm sure that my smile this morning would cause you to want to do that as well so that other persons can be blessed by today's program. But just before we officially begin, as I said, um, we have two gentlemen here, two men of God. I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves and to my immediate left, I have a young man. Um, good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good morning, Pastor. I'm doing quite well. All right. Can you introduce yourself to our online viewers and tell them who you are? Okay. A pleasant um, good day to everyone. And of course, we're happy to have you. Happy to share um, in this morning, Pastor's Corner, with you. My name is Marlon Pancho. I'm the pastor of the Grenadines District of SDAs. Um, include all the churches uh, on Karaku and Pitimatnik. So we're talking about Leicester, uh, we're talking about Hillsborough, Dover, and, um, and of course, as I mentioned, Pity Martinic. So happy to be with you this morning, and I bring you greetings even from the Grenadines. All right, so there you have it. The, the Sister Isle Massive is in the house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and to my extreme left, we have a man of God, a young man of God. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Pastor Best. How are you doing today? I'm doing great by God's help and by God's grace. All right. I would like you to tell the people something about yourself. Well, a pleasant good morning to all of our viewers. Um, I'm Pastor Oliver Scott. I serve as the Executive Secretary of Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists and also at, as its Communication uh, Director um, that relates to the different um, virtual and online programs that we have been having and, uh, of course, um, as the Prime Ministry's coordinator of the conference as well. Wonderful, wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of our online viewers today, Pastor Oliver Scott is the man behind the scene. He's the man that makes sure um, our online services go well. Uh, he's the man that makes sure that the Grenada Conference stays prayed up. And we say to God, be the glory. You know, Pastor... Scott, since you're the man responsible for praying, I would like you to do, do us the honors this morning and begin with a word of prayer for us. Okay, it's a privilege. Let's pray. And those of you who are viewing, I invite you to join in faith as we pray. Heavenly Father, we place the proceedings into your charge. We ask that the Holy Spirit be with each of us as participants here and be with each viewer. May our program be edifying to everyone. May you be glorified thereby, and may we be blessed and be helped to experience Christian growth. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, just before I engage these wonderful gentlemen, let me first engage my online audience. Well, by now I, I, I believe that Sister Alicia Stevens is, is a Grenadian. You know, she's always there with us, you know. She's always viewing our programs on Mission Live. We say welcome to you, Sister Stevens. I see she's saying good morning, everyone. Um, Anisha, um, good morning to you. I Pastor Panchu, you know, she says, Pastor Panchu, Karaku in the house. Amen, amen. Good morning, Sister Anisha. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Sister Veronica, I'm saying greetings to, to the pastors and to all who are viewing this great program, Blessings in Abundance. Yes, um, Darion. Yes, amen. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Marcel. Good morning, Esther, Charles. Good morning. Good morning to all of our viewers online. And of course, we encourage your comments, your questions in the chat. And as 
as we go through the program, if time permits, we would be able to attempt to answer some of the questions as the program goes on nicely. And so, gentlemen, you are well settled in. You know, um, you are well guided by the Spirit of God. Um, you yourself, you are going through the process that we are that we are about to discuss today that is growing in Christ, right? Because I believe I'm still growing and I would always be growing in Christ and I'm sure um, you have the same um, um, belief. Amen. Yes, yes. And so as we discuss this, um, this important topic, it is fitting considering we have recently ended a mega online series and we'd have persons who'd have given their heart to Jesus and so they know they are beginning the process of growing in Jesus. And so I think this today's uh, topic is important and um, it can benefit each and every one of us as believers in Christ. And so I'll begin with a Pastor Pancho. The first question I have today, or the, as we begin, what are some obvious signs of true Christian conversion? Okay, again, it's a pleasure to be here and, and an excellent question to begin um, because, of course, when one accepts Christ, um, there is an expectation that there is change. Um, the Bible says that, you know, our heart of stone is removed and God gives us a heart of flesh. And so the obvious sign, at least one of the obvious signs, is that one would expect change. And the prophet Isaiah himself, and he's going to borrow a theme from, from the book of Isaiah, says that it's like a plant. Um, when the seed is planted, it, it grows up, and you know, it, as as we mentioned, it gets stronger. The branches come later on. We expect the fruits to be, um, to be born by that tree, and so some of the obvious sign one we expect change, change from the bad to the good, um, from negative um, to positive in terms of behavior. So the drunkard no longer have desire for alcohol. The smoker loses his desire to smoke. Um, you know, the person who loved being in the dance hall or in the parties no more have that desire. So there is a definite change, and that change is that that person moves from a, 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 a seeker of pleasure and a love of pleasure, and they become a lover of things that are spiritual and wholesome that comes in knowing, um, by knowing Jesus. So the change is what, is what we look for, and that change is a movement from darkness into light. All right, um, wonderful, wonderful submission. Pastor Scott, do you have anything you'd like to add in the discussion? Yes, well, Pastor Pancho is definitely um, on point. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to his response, um, when a Christian, when one has been converted into Christianity, then it means there'll be change. In fact, the word conversion in, in itself mm -hmm. has to do with, with change. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so therefore, the Bible says in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And so therefore, there must be a different way of living All right. um, for the person who has accepted Christ. So for those of you who have accepted Christ, then there has to be that change. There has to be that difference. Um, you cannot be the same as you have been before you met Christ. You must have a life that resembles the life of Jesus Christ. And uh, the greatest hallmark of a Christian is that of love. The Bible says God is love. Amen. And Christ, he demonstrated that as the hallmark of his character. And for us as Christians who are growing in Christ, the hallmark of our Christianity, our conversion, the sign, the greatest sign is that of love. Remember um, when Paul, after he spoke about the fruit, the, the gifts of the Spirit, yes. he says, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Mm -hmm. And the ex more excellent way that he was referring to was that of love. I'm um, spoken of in 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about what love is like. Mm -hmm. When love gets up in the morning and wakes up and takes a stretch and brushes his teeth and, uh, you know, yes. takes the shower and uh, puts on, take off the pajamas and mm -hmm. put on the clothes and go out into the, the world and live. Mm -hmm. He says that love is kind. Right. You know, love is gentle. Um, love is, does not think evil. Mm -hmm. It's not easily provoked. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it speaks about what love is like in a real and practical way. And these are the signs that show that indeed we have been converted to Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Wonderful submission by both gentlemen. I told you that these men are men of God. 
experienced men in the faith. And so we will, we will be learning a lot today. Uh, Pastor Scott, since you're already on the floor, and one, you gave a wonderful submission along with Pastor Pancho, but I'll go with you, Pastor Scott, because you are the most recent to speak. Um, what does growing in Christ actually entail for a new believer then? What does growing in Christ entail then? I mean, there, there are many things I, I can mention, but I'll emphasize one thing for now, okay. and that of surrender. Mm -hmm. um, for you to grow in Christ as a Christian, whether as a new believer or someone that has been around for, for, for a while, mm -hmm. uh, you must be surrendered to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that we must, if any man have been Christ, or if you're going to be a follower of Christ, you must deny yourself. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross and follow me. And so if we are going to follow Christ, because Christian growth is about following Christ. Amen. So if we are going to follow Christ and experience Christian growth in the process, it means we must deny ourselves. Because the natural man desires the things of the flesh. Mm -hmm. But when we are surrendered to Christ, we are able to reject our own sinful inclinations mm -hmm. and submit to the will of God. There are some aspects of God's will that may be easy for us and comfortable for us. Great when it happens like that. Amen. <laughs> but there are some aspects of the will of God that really cuts across and against what we naturally are inclined to. Mm -hmm. But because again the word love, we love God so much, we are willing to surrender everything to him and once you are fully surrendered to Christ and have fully denied self, you have to bunk to must grow in Christ. Amen. Well said. Pastor Pancho. You know, it's a wonderful thing. You know, even as you think, um, I reflect in my personal life um, about what Christ would have done mm -hmm. um, in terms of growing to know him more, growing to, to feel his presence in my life. And how sweet it is, you know, because the Bible says, come and taste and see indeed that the Lord is good. So, the practical, in the practical sense, the person who finds Jesus finds happiness. They find joy. Um, they find peace. You know, it says a peace the world can't give and the peace that the world, you know, can't take away. So daily is like you're walking and as you always, you know, reflect to persons, you know, every day with sweet, is Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Mm -hmm. And it's more than a cliche mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's an a experience that is out of this world. Imagine surrendering your life to somebody who created this world in the first place. So that even as we look at all the turmoil in the world, all the conflicts and all of that is going on presently, that you could find peace in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I, I reflected on a, a text in John 3, 3. Um, you know, it, the overall story had to do with Nicodemus and his desire, you know, to, to understand, mm -hmm. you know, this whole new life experience. And Jesus replied in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Very truly, I tell you, no man can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God except be born of the water and the spirit. And so it goes on to, to, to make the reflection in, in verse 6, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. Mm -hmm. And so growing in Christ for the new believer, that change, you know, mm -hmm. I said from that fleshy desire, the worldly desire, into a new spiritual experience is unlike any other. Okay. And so, of course, as it says, it entails that new experience. Uh, Pastor Scott, you know, you know, give um, account of it already. You know, it's an experience that, you know, it's a change, as we mentioned earlier. And so it really entails that feeling, not more than an emotional response, but that when Jesus comes in, there's a new life that you find. Because you must ask, well, how could I go back in my mother? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you don't have to go back into your, into your mom. All you have to do is be born of the water and of the spirit. And so when a new believer finds that experience, then they're on the way to enjoy a successful Christian experience. All right, all right. Amen, amen, amen. And so, Pastor Pancho, with that being said, how can someone be totally set free from the burdens or failures of their past life? Uh, please provide biblical support for your answer because we are here speaking about a new experience and some persons may may have had some you know i want to just say colorful past experience or so, some failures you know or burdens that they may be carrying it, it it doesn't have to be that colorful you know but um burdens failures um so the question is how can someone be totally set free 
from the burdens or failures of their past life? And can you please provide some biblical support for your answer? Uh, well, Pastor Bess, I must confess that this is one of my, my favorite questions. Okay. Um, and the reason why is it tells me that no matter what our past has been, mm -hmm. you know, the question asks, you know, how, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't want to give the oversimplified answer. And of course, I do Pastor Scott will contribute shortly. But, you know, it's, it's all about having that faith mm -hmm. in God and believing in him, believing in, in the power to make that change in your life, that whatever your background has been, and I know, you know, some persons had a very rough upbringing. Mm -hmm. Some persons have had an experience that even words itself cannot truly express how horrific it may have been. Okay. Um, it could have been child abuse. Um, you have persons who have experienced spousal abuse. Um, persons who have experienced um, the abuse of drugs, alcohol. Some people have experienced rape and, and many of those horrific, yes. horrific crimes. Mm -hmm. And that person seeking Jesus, seeking a new life. And they say, but, but God, my past have been so ugly. Mm -hmm. You know, my past have been so dark. Mm -hmm. You know, could I have a new start? And Jesus looked back at them from the cross and he said, yes, you could have a new start. That old past, that old man, that person who loved, you know, all those things and experienced all those negative things could be left in the back in the past and i just want persons just to share quickly um in luke chapter 12 verse 25 it says and which of you with taking thought can add one stature to his cubit mm -hmm. could any one of us could make ourselves taller none of us if they if ye they're not able to do that which is least why take your thought for the rest mm -hmm. and i use that text in particular to bring out you know the point that none of us could think and say okay i'm gonna be 10 feet or six feet tall or Put one more inch on my height. So God said, don't even worry about that. You can't do it. So don't, don't worry about anything else. Leave your past in the past. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. And who gives you the power? Jesus gives you the power. And so anybody who surrenders to Jesus, God allows them to put their past behind, grant them healing, and set them on a new path. Amen, amen. Pastor Scott, you would like to add something to that, um, that question? Yes, yes, def definitely. And um, it's, an, it's an important question in terms of being set free from the failures. Mm -hmm. um, I want to emphasize the, the failures because right, yes. um, every person who has accepted Christ um, have had failures mm -hmm. and will continue to experience failures mm -hmm. as, as well. And uh, in order to experience freedom you know, from the possible crippling effect of the failures of our past, it's important that we exercise freedom faith in God. Amen. 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 To believe by faith that when God says that he has forgiven you, that he has actually and literally completely forgiven you. Amen. 100%. Amen. Amen. And so when you have that faith to believe that God's forgiveness is total and complete, then there is no need to have the failures lingering with you and have you become paralyzed by the failures of your past because you are free because Christ has forgiven you 100%. He has forgiven you completely. And so in Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible speaks about faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for yes. and the evidence of things not seen. So we needed forgiveness mm -hmm. because we have sinned. You come to God today, you say, Lord, forgive me and by faith, you accept the forgiveness of God that you have received that which you have desired, you have hoped for. So faith is critical. In verse 6, it says, And without faith, it is impossible mm -hmm. to please him. Mm -hmm. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you come to God, you can put your pot on fire. Something will be cooking. Amen. <laughs> and then... Along with, with that, Pastor Best, in terms of, of um, being free from the burdens of our past, in terms of sins and failures, First, Corinthians, First John chapter 1, verse 9 talks about when we confess our sins, yes. that God is faithful, he's just, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us not of some, no, no way. but of all, all. unrighteousness. Amen. And so faith comes by hearing the word of God, and so we have to claim the word of God that he forgives us of all all our past sins, all of our unrighteousness. Acceptance is also critical to being set free from burdens and past failures. Yes. Um, the forgiveness is offered us. Mm -hmm. 
and by faith we must accept it yes. and hold on to it and claim it as yours. I am forgiven Amen. and by the help and by the grace of God. So do not give your sins to God and cling to it. What you have to cling to is the fact that God has completely and totally forgiven you. Um, there are times when it depends upon what is involved and how extreme the situation may be, that even though God has forgiven someone, that person might just need some uh, psychological help as well, okay. um, depending upon if it has had that kind of impact mm -hmm. upon, upon the person, and that is in place. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, when it comes to the spiritual component, not just the emotional component, but the spiritual component, forgiveness and being free from sin is not just an emotion. Once you have, by faith, sought the forgiveness of God, the notwithstanding the feelings, the forgiveness is literal and it's actual, and so you, we all can be free from the burdens and the failures of our past. Amen. And Amen. Pastor Bess, um, just follow me, because Pastor Scott raised a very important point, um, point there. You know, I just want to, again, for our viewers, um, those who are sharing with us today, that sometimes persons look back in the past, mm -hmm. As they said, they said when you, you know, hindsight is something else. And they blame themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they carry all of this guilt. And they feel that you, they cannot be forgiven. You know, but as Pastor Scott would have rightly said, you know, and, and, and remind us that God could forgive all sins. Amen. You know, and so we have, um, our viewers have to remember that. Don't look back in your past and, and, and let guilt, you know, trample you and let guilt confine you. Jesus made the promise and he's faithful to that promise. And so we have to give up our past and allow the forgiveness and thank him for the forgiveness that he gives us and accept it. Also, I, I just would like to add also, um, if you find yourself from time to time, you know, struggling with the thought, um, that is when you need to go closer to the Lord because the Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren and he wants to bring back things, you know, to make you think that you are not worth anything in the eyes of God. But you ought to know that in Jesus, you are high value. All right, because Jesus gave his life for you. And so whenever um, the thoughts come to mind, you ought to rebuke those thoughts and press forward in Jesus' name. Because Jesus has forgiven you of all of your sins, all of your failures, and he has taken all your burden. He also, as a matter of fact, encourages us to take his burden and give, it, and give ours to him, in essence, because his is light and easy to bear. All right, so let us make that that, that all-important exchange and have the faith and the confidence in Jesus that he has forgiven and he's, he has your burdens and now you can walk with your heads up because Jesus has paid it all for you. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, gentlemen. I have a, 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 a scripture text here, which is Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. In that text, it speaks of the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit. Now, Pastor Pancho, I would like you to speak on the flesh aspect of the text. And Pastor Scott, I would like you to speak on the fruit of the Spirit aspect. Now, I'm going to read the text so that our visitors, our viewers, and um, all those looking online today can have an idea as to what the text says. And so that you can also have an idea. And it says in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verses 19 to 23, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, that's on verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Galatians 5. Yes. You know, it, it's interesting because one of the first observations that we will make um, is that the list seems quite longer mm -hmm. for the deeds of the flesh. Correct. And uh, I think God was purposeful in that because evil is have some way of multiplying, you know, and that's why sometimes it's always 
good to nip it early, in, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like if you see something happening, like you have a tendency towards something evil, don't keep practicing it. But by God's grace, bring it before God. Ask him for strength to overcome. Because the thing that seems seemingly innocent today, that when you practice and you say, well, God, is just a little thing, you know? And it might be something minor. Maybe you might tell a lie. Somebody ask a question. And rather than speak the truth, you might just tell a little lie. You say, well, it's a little lie. You know, nothing more. And then you realize you start to graduate quickly. And that's what the work of the flesh really is. Um, it's those practices that is contrary to the will of God. And so that's why when it comes to growing in Christ, the apostle is clear here. Any one of those things that were mentioned, that once we are practicing it, it means that we are not fit for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It means, therefore, that our walk is not in accordance to the will of God. And as long as our walk is not in accordance of the will of God, then we have to change our direction. And so again, let me just quickly just highlight some of it. And it's something that we all could relate to, um, you know, uncleanness, mm -hmm. fornication, adultery, mm -hmm. um, witchcraft. That was, a, you know, that has been a big thing in our history. Persons want to prosper in life, and they may find it easier to go by the, the, the obia man or the obia woman mm -hmm. and work some witchcraft in order to prosper. But the Bible says clearly that when we practice those things, that we cannot succeed. The temporary gains cannot be measured, you know, um, in terms of a lifetime, because the devil always gives and the devil always takes back. Mm -hmm. God is the only one who gives and keep multiplying what he gives us. And in fact, he, as John 3, 16 said, he gives us a perfect gift, which is through his son, Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So again, God is calling us away from drunkenness, from reveling. You know, persons, when you watch the boat going up to Carico, um, this weekend, you could have seen, I mean, hundreds of persons. Yes. I mean, we're still in the COVID, you know, situation. And I wonder, I say, but how could all these people, you know, just carelessly throw their life in that sense give at, at that great risk not only of the physical harm but also as the bible says that all who practice those things that they are they will not inherit the kingdom of god mm -hmm. so all the revelry and the the rat you know people stabbing people chopping people shooting you know all of those things are contrary to the kingdom of god and god is calling us to stay away from it and to grow in christ any believer uh, any person who practices those things the bible says they are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor Scott. Okay, so the fruit of the Spirit, um, and you have read the text, mm -hmm. um, all the verses that uh, address the matter of the fruit of the Spirit. And I just want to go back a bit because in John, uh, Jesus th teaches us that he's the, the vine and we are the branches. Yes. And uh, we cannot bear fruit of ourselves. We have to be connected to the vine. We have to be connected to Jesus Christ. And so for you to bear the fruit of the Spirit, you cannot do it in your own strength. Okay. Jesus says, without me, you could do nothing, absolutely nothing. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. And so for you to bear the fruit of the Spirit, the evidence that you are a Christian, that you are for real, that you are genuine, and authentic in your walk with God that you're not faking it. No, it's not a case of fake it till you make it. Okay. <laughs> but it's a case where your Christianity is real. Um, you must be connected to Jesus Christ as the branch is connected to the vine. And once you are connected to Jesus Christ, then bearing the fruit of the Spirit becomes automatic, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, the fruit will, will grow and develop. It's interesting to note that the fruit has different aspects to it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the prominent um, aspects of the fruit of the Spirit is love. Mm -hmm. And I alluded to that before. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot say that you're a Christian and you are not loving. Because to be a Christian is to be a follower of Christ. Yes. And the hallmark characteristic of Christ is that of love. Mm -hmm. And so it means, therefore, that we will demonstrate love for God in obedience to the first four of the commandments. Yes. And we will demonstrate love for fellow men mm -hmm. in obedience to the last six of God's commandments. Yes. Because you cannot say you love God and you treat your brother like a dog. <laughs> Neither could you say you love the brother man and hate the other man. It must be a case where your love includes God and includes all of humanity. Not only that, but when you are growing in Christ, that the fruit of the Spirit will also involve some things that will stem from love as well. Mm -hmm. 
um, you will have joy. Yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Right. Hallelujah. This joy that I have, this world didn't give it to me. Mm -hmm. And this world cannot take it away. Jesus promises that he will give us joy. And uh, then he will give us peace is one of those things. You will experience inner peace. Mm -hmm. And you will also help others to experience peace. Mm -hmm. um, so as, as a Christian, you cannot be someone that creates confusion. You know, that creates bacchanal as it were. Yeah. Um, you will have to be someone that, that helps to create peace within your context. Mm -hmm. um, there are times when you may not be able to control what others do. Because the Bible does say that as much as light within you, live peaceably with all men. Mm -hmm. So you do what you can do. And others will experience and demonstrate the freedom of choice. But a Christian experiences inner peace, but he's also a peacemaker yes, yes, in terms of what he contributes. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have control what other people will contribute, but he has control of what he will contribute, and he contributes peace. Um, he's also patient and gentle. There's goodness demonstrated and faithfulness to God. So the Christian will demonstrate these things. And what I like about it is that the Bible says against such there is no law. Amen. In other words, there is no virtuous or worthwhile law that will contradict these things. There's no wholesome law mm -hmm. that will encourage you to not be loving and, and be a peacemaker and be patient, be gentle, demonstrate goodness and faithfulness. Any law that is worth following will harmonize with these things. Amen. And so the Ten Commandments, they're perfect, they're good as the Bible said. And so, therefore, there is a synergy between having these aspects of the fruit of the Spirit and obedience to the Ten Commandments. Because the Ten Commandments, they are about loving God and loving others. And when you love others, you're going to be kind. You're going to be patient. Right. You will demonstrate goodwill and goodness to them. Right. Um, you will demonstrate faithfulness to God himself. Um, you are going to um, exhibit peace and love. And so, the Ten Commandments and the living out the fruit of the Spirit they go hand in hand because Amen. there is no law against such things. Amen. Well, well said, gentlemen. Well said. You know, um, you guys did wonderful in explaining uh, the different aspects of the text. But Pastor Scott, as you're on the floor, right? Um, I have a question here that can godly service then enhance one's spiritual growth? And I, if you can share a Bible um, text to support your answer, and that would be amazing. Can godly service enhance one's spiritual growth okay so the the answer is a is a big yes right. <laughs> it's a, a, a big what type yes. of yes <laughs> a big one okay <laughs> <laughs> definitely viewers um godly service dem um, definitely will impact um one's christian growth and um i i want to draw attention uh, our attention to the book of ephesians uh chapter chapter four um, it's important for me to, to go there, Ephesians um, chapter 4. Yes, Ephesians chapter 4. And in Ephesians chapter 4, um, the, the Bible speaks about um, the gift of leadership and the role of leadership within the context of, of the church, the body of Christ. By the time we get to verse, to verse 13, to verse 12 rather, the Bible tells us what leadership will do. Leadership is given for the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So leadership is given to the church pastors and so on, are given to the church, um, those who are converted to Christ, yes. to accomplish these two things. One, the perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry. Yes. The word perfecting is an old English word for equipping. Yes. So pastors are supposed to, and leaders are supposed to equip the church mm -hmm. members to do ministry. You talk about yes. service. Yes. To do ministry. Yes. And apart from doing ministry, it says for the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So so there's a, that connection between being involved in service mm -hmm. and also um, being edified in the way of the Lord. And here's the result, verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Amen. Amen. So the one who is involved Amen. in ministry and in service... The end result will be Christian growth. He becomes a perfect man. Amen. Now, the word perfect there does not mean sinless. Mm -hmm. It means mature. Okay. Right? So when you grow, you become mature. Mm -hmm. So the one who's involved in Christian service, 
is going to mature spiritually because when you're involved in Christian service, you have to be connected to God. Amen. You have to depend upon God. You have to pray to God. You have to seek his help. And in the process of being actively involved and in the process of depending upon God, you are growing and maturing spiritually. Amen. And so there's definitely a case where the one who is involved in service is going to grow. And so that's why the answer is not just yes, big one. but it's a big <laughs> yes. And um, just in a practical way, you would realize that oftentimes in the church, persons who are not active, yes. um, they, they tend to go. Mm, because, because the one who is active is also growing. Yeah. The muscles are developing. Yes. Um, and as, as I say sometimes to members, if you are not growing up in Christ, mm -hmm. It means you're going away from Christ. Mm -hmm. You cannot be stagnant. Mm -hmm. It cannot be the same way you've been 20 years ago. No. No way, Jose. No way. It's either you're growing or you are going. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the people who remain are persons who are actively involved in some form of ministry mm -hmm. in the service of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Pancho. Okay, I think that's quite a comprehensive answer. Yes, I yeah, I don't think anything I could add to that, <laughs> you know. Um, so let's, as Pastor Sotske, you know, we have to keep growing. Amen. And that's the main thing. Once you accept Christ, keep growing, keep growing, keep growing. You know, as, as, I, as we discuss, as you gentlemen share, you know, the thought came to my mind, you know, that this program is one that can also, that can help our viewers to contemplate, to think about their own spiritual relationship with the Lord, their own growth and maturity in Christ Jesus. And so viewers online, as you view, you know, I want you to really pay attention and, you know, consider how things have been going in your Christian experience with the Lord over the amount of years you have been, or months or days you have been walking with Jesus. Um, examine yourself to see whether you are, you are growing in Christ, as Pastor Scott said, or you are, or if God forbid you might be going away from Christ. But it is God's desire, it is our desire that you would be growing in Christ into that mature relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, a lot have been said, a lot have been discussed uh, thus far. And uh, I want to give you a little moment so that all the information that has been discussed thus far can settle well in your mind. And so at this moment... We would take a short pause as we would be blessed with an item of special music at this time. Song, 
Till you change my name So I'm no longer the same No, I won't let go Till you bless my soul Till you change my name Or I'm no longer the same I'm no longer the same Welcome back, welcome back to our Pastor's Corner. I'm your host, Pastor Samora Best, and today with me in studio is Pastor Panchu and Pastor Scott, and we are discussing this beautiful topic, growing in Jesus. Some may say growing in Christ. You know, but today we have been, we had discussions thus far, and we have been blessed. Wouldn't you say amen, gentlemen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I want to also say thanks to our dear sister who blessed our hearts with that wonderful submission in special music. May God continue to use you for his name, honor, and glory. Well, gentlemen, we have been, we, as I said, we had a wonderful time thus far. Amen. Beautiful discussions. I must say I've been learning from, from, from both of you. I'm sitting at your feet here today, <laughs> and I'm learning from both of you. And I must say, um, praise be to God. For that, but as we continue, we are we would continue the discussion, and so Pastor Pancho, I'll start with you. I, I think I started with you to begin, so I'll start with Pastor Scott. Yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll start with Pastor Scott this time. Um, Pastor Scott, um, can you please state some practical steps that can be employed for successful Christian growth? Okay, and um, th that question is so, is very critically important. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you if you miss any of these steps, mm -hmm. then it will not be to your benefit. Okay. You know, all must be included. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure in terms of order of importance per se, okay. but I'm just giving some steps um, that are some treaders um, that are important when it comes to the matter of growing in Christ. So one, prayer. Um, anyone that is going to be growing in Christ must be a praying person. Um, you know, if you don't pray, you won't stay. Okay. When it comes to the church and Christian growth and remaining in Christ, if you don't pray, you won't stay. You must have a prayer life. And the stronger your prayer life is, the more persistent you are in prayer, um, the better it will be for you. So make sure that you spend quality and quantity time praying to God. Because to not pray or to stop praying is really to give up. Mm -hmm. That's why when Jesus was about to tell a parable in Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says he tells a parable for this purpose that men ought always to pray mm -hmm. and not to faint. In other words, you must always pray and never give up. Amen. If you stop praying as a Christian, you'll give up. Because prayer is critical to you keep keeping on, keeping on. Amen. Amen. And then the second thing um, that is important is that of your devotional life. Okay. So reading the Bible, studying the Bible, or listening to the Bible, because we have the technology that can facilitate that. 
um, listening or reading to the, sp the Spirit of Prophecy, the writings of Ellen G. White, mm -hmm. um, the different devotional content that the, ch that the church, under the leading of the Holy Spirit, will make available to the members, like our Bible study guide that we call our quarterly. Mm -hmm. In other words, exposing yourself to devotions, whether it be listening to sermons, um, all of these things. Once you must saturate yourself with the word of God. Amen. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word God. of God. Um, you have to feed yourself with the word of God because there, there, are, two, um, there are two armies or two strong men fighting for us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, the winner is not so much on the strength of either, okay. but the winner depends upon who do we feed. Okay. If you feed the spiritual man, then the spiritual man will prevail. Mm -hmm. If you feed a carnal, sinful man with carnal and sinful things, mm -hmm. the sinful man will have dominance in your life. Okay. And so we have to feed ourselves with spiritual things, with the word of God, and so our devotional life is critical to Christian growth. We must Amen. saturate ourselves with wholesome spiritual content. Mm -hmm. Then we must also, um, the next one I want to share is, it has to do with fellowship, worship and fellowship. Okay. Worship and fellowship. They go hand in hand. Yes. Um, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. So our presence at church must not just be a mere form and formality. Mm -hmm. We must be in tune with a worship experience. And the fellowship is also important. It's like a cross. Worship is the vertical mm -hmm. and uh, fellowship is the horizontal with our fellow men. Yes. Iron sharpened iron. And so it's important that we, that we fellowship and that we go into the house of God to to worship, but also for fellowship. So I'm always concerned when members, if I see a member consistently, as soon as church is over, that person busts it out, yeah. ready to go yeah. home. Yeah. I'm concerned about that because if it happens oh, once in a blue moon, then, then so be it. You may have something to attend to. Yes. But there has to be the desire and involvement in fellowship mm -hmm. because God knows why he causes us to combine for worship. The Bible says, forsaken, not the assembling of itself together as a man of some is. Amen. And so therefore, worshiping God and having a good fellowship with our fellow men, um, these are critically important. And the Bible alludes to it in Acts chapter 2, mm -hmm. um, verse 42 and the going on, where it talks about they came together, breaking bread, yes. having all things yes. in common, and, um, and having fellowship. And they, they continued in fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so it shows, therefore, that the horizontal, um, you and I, you know, meeting, greeting, um, that's important yes. when it comes to Christian growth. And then the final thing that I want to talk about is that of Christian service, yes. both in terms of ministering to the, the saints, yeah. as well as witnessing to those who need to accept Christ, soul winning. Yes. Yes. So, so these are four legs to Christian growth. The one leg is prayer. The second leg is devotion. Yes. The third leg, worship mm -hmm. and fellowship. The fourth leg has to do with service, enrich and witnessing. And when these things happen, and we exercise these four legs, the sheep will grow. Amen. And we are sheep, Amen. and God is the good shepherd. Amen. 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 Pastor Pancho? Um, just to, to add, um, again, and you know, thank you, Pastor Scott, um, because I think those are critical. Um, that one must also have a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. um, it's critical for the Christian survival and success. Because no man knows everything. And sometimes we have to express that humility. That even when we are confronted by the word of God, if our actions, our behavior, the things that we find dearest to us is in conflict to the word of God, we must be willing to give it up, to put it aside. Because we don't want to please self, we don't want to please others. But most importantly, our actions, our words, we want it to please God. So I think also, just in, in addition to what was already established, that our spirit must be teachable and we must be humble enough that if the word of God confronts us, that we make changes, that we allow the spirit of God to work in us and be courageous enough to make those changes in order to please God. All right. Well, Pastor Pancho, um, since you're on the stage in, in the sense and you have just ended there, I have a question that I want you to attempt to answer. All right. Um, the question comes, it's, the question is, 
please share some insight on Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, in relation to the Christian growing growth process. All right, I would like you to share some insight on that. Let me just read the text so that persons I'm viewing can have an idea as to what the scripture says. Um, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 to 14 says, Not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which were behind, or which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press forward toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Wonderful. And so, again, you know, because we are um, today dealing with growing in Christ, I think the apostle here has given us the blueprint as to how we could do so successfully um, in terms of having that singular aim, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all about Christ Jesus. It's all about his high calling. Mm -hmm. And the Bible was quite specific. It says, I press, you know, pressing, you know, is not passive. It is something that is quite active and purposeful mm -hmm. that we are seeking after the will of God and fulfilling that will. As, as you know, as the Bible once again, you know, admonish us, lean not unto your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And so here the apostle says, press, like an athlete who is training for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Train hard, pray hard as, as, as Pastor Scott established. Study the word of God, fellowship hard, weakness hard. Because we are striving for a price that is eternal. And once we understand that, once we keep pressing forward by faith, our faith will grow stronger, our Christian experience will be more fulfilling, and of course, we will be prepared citizens for the kingdom of God. Amen, amen. And Pastor Scott, this question, well, it's for both of you all, but I would like to start with you, Pastor Scott. Um, do you think new believers can experience successful spiritual growth in an online environment, in light of Hebrews, and you made allusion to it a while ago, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. I would read the text, however. Um, the question continues. What should be the attitude of believers towards the face-to-face -face gatherings? But we'll start with Pastor Scott. Let me just read the text. And it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yes. All right, so um, that, that question um, definitely calls for a balanced approach. Um, Hebrews tells us that we must come together mm -hmm. for worship and fellowship. Basically, that's what it's saying to us. And, and so in light of this, um, once, once we have life, health, and favorable circumstance, once the doors of the church are open for, for worship and for fellowship, um, that's where we should be. Um, because I say life, because except it's your funeral, you need to have life to be there. Um, I said health, because there are times when um, ill health may prevent you from being there. And so in, the, in those times... Um, using the online virtual means will be beneficial to you in your spiritual growth. Um, but if you have the health that can take you there, then that's where you should be. And then favorable circumstance. Favorable circumstance. Um, there are circumstances that may prevent you from being there. And you have to be genuine with, with, with God. Um, you may have to work on Wednesday night. Of course, not on Sabbath. Uh, but you're not going to tell your boss you're not coming to work because you have to go to prayer meeting Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. If you understand what I'm saying. Yes, but when it comes to Sabbath, yeah. of course, that's you know, yeah. it's already set aside by God. And so you say to your boss, you cannot come to work because you have right. to be at church. Yes. So, so when, once you consider these principles, um, you should find yourself in the house of God where life, health, and favorable circumstance permit. Mm -hmm. Um However, there is still a place for the virtual and online means. Um, it should not substitute the face-to-face, -face, but it complements it. 
and the persons can grow spiritually um, by being exposed to spiritual content um, online, as is the case with Mission Live and other platforms. But remember, um, if you have life, you have health and favorable circumstance, when the doors of the church are opened, that's where you should be. And uh, the virtual means should be a means also of complementing that mm -hmm. to help you in your walk with God. Amen. And, and witnessing also. Yes. Because there are some persons who may not come to the, to the physical church per se, mm -hmm. but we can maximize on the virtual means and the online means to help these persons to come to Christ. And once they, once they have come to Christ, we encourage them to come into the house of God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Pancho, any quick thoughts on it? Uh, well, I do agree uh, with Pastor Scott. Um, the online virtual programs and um, worship services have their place. Yeah. Um, but as long as we are in good health, and there's nothing that is preventing us, even as Pastor Scott mentioned, we should find ourselves in fellowship, physical fellowship. Mm -hmm. Because we, if you get caught up, you know, being home, being isolated from the brethren, then fellowship suffers. We don't have that human contact. And as, as was mentioned earlier, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And so we indeed need that physical contact. As long as we are healthy and we have the opportunity to gather together in a physical location, we should. So if you want to be sharpened, you need to be in the house of the Lord. As long as conditions are right and you are well able to be there, you should be there. All right, gentlemen. So we had a wonderful time this morning and we are down to the final question. All right, Pastor Pantry, I'll start with you and then I'll go over to um, Pastor Scott. All right, the final question. At what point in the Christian growth process does a person attain spiritual maturity and how long does this process take? That's a big question. Let me just repeat it one more time. At what point in the Christian growth process does a person attain spiritual maturity? And how long does this process take? Okay, so I'll begin. I'm simply, I hope I don't oversimplify it. But salvage that Christian walk, this growth that we're talking about, um, to me it's a lifelong process. Um, but one which, you know, I said is filled with its joys. It's filled with challenges. But by the grace of God, as long as our faith is where it ought to be, is in Christ Jesus, and we practice those things that were mentioned earlier, I talk about study of the word, weakness in fellowship and together, and those, those aspects of our Christian work, then we'll continue to grow. And as long as our faith continues to grow, and we continue to strive, you know, for the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus, then it's a fulfilling experience. And one of the things that I always, you know, remind persons, you know, never give up. You know, um, sometimes the enemy comes in and whisper in your ears, this doesn't make sense. You know, um, you know, what if you just go this other way? You're going to be happier here. And he tried to take you away from the path that Christ has set, us, set out before us. But I always rem I'm, I'm reminded, the Bible says, narrow is the way. You know, so there are challenges, but we have to keep pressing on by faith. And so that level of maturity to, to me is when we reach to the place to understand that we cannot depend upon self, but we all of our dependency should be upon Christ. He takes his perfect righteousness and he places, places it upon us and he takes away our filthy garment. And so our maturity comes when our faith is matured, when it's um, reached that place whereby it knows, hey, I can't depend on self, but I got to put all my trust in the one who can save me, which is Christ Jesus. And again, as I said, it's a lifelike journey, but we have to keep faithful and press forward, even trusting God that he'll make the way for us to be successful. Amen. Yes, um, the issue of when, when it comes to Christian maturity, reminds me of, of justification and sanctification. Um, when we accept Christ, he justifies us there and then. In that moment, we are justified. But it should be told is that we sin daily. So daily we continue to experience the forgiveness and the justification of Jesus Christ. And uh, you don't say, because I'm forgiven now, that I no longer need forgiveness. We need it daily. And, uh, and also, when it comes to sanctification, um, when we accept Christ, he sanctifies us. He sets us apart from the world, and we are now in Christ. However, it is also the work of a lifetime. Because for the rest of our lives, was we're, we're growing and becoming more and more like Christ, giving up certain, certain sins. So too, when it comes to Christian maturity, a lot depends upon our surrender to, to, 
to God or the degree of our surrender to God. Because you can accept Christ and, and very soon, having accepted Christ, you have fully surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and you are in a state of Christian maturity. But at the same time, Christian maturity is not, is not something that happens as an end in itself and it, it has happened five days after I accepted Christ or ten years after I accepted Christ and, and that's it. No. When you're mature, maturity does not mean there isn't room for growth and for improvement. Yeah. Um, you can mature and still continue to develop and continue to grow. So wherever you are now, as a Christian, you can experience maturity now by fully surrendering your life to Christ. However, there will always be room for growth, for development, and for improvement so you continue to mature until death or the coming of Christ. So maturity should never stop, but it should continue until death or the coming of Christ. Amen. Um, Amen. If, Go if, ahead. if you just allow me to use a biblical reference, um, in Ephesians chapter 4, um, in verse 13 talks about becoming a mature man, verse 13, but it doesn't stop there. In verse, by the time we get to verse 15, it says, by the time we get to verse 15, it says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So the person that became Matthew continues to grow in Christ. Amen. In a nutshell, it's a lifelong process until Jesus comes. Well, friends of mine, I am looking at the, the screen the, the, and in the chat section, it seems like everyone is in agreement with our total discussion today, um, discussing growing in Christ. I didn't see any question, which means, um, gentlemen, you guys did a wonderful job to the honor and glory of God. And I continue to encourage you to keep serving Jesus and keep um, being of service for the Lord, both to humankind and to God. And also, I'm um, continue to help other persons to know the Lord and to grow in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the end of a time well spent here today. And for those of you who probably would have um, logged, on, logged in a bit late, you can view the, re the rebroadcast tonight at 8 p.m. on Mission Live. Also, I want to encourage persons to, you know, stay tuned as we continue to have our online services as well. You can view Mission Live on Friday evening, Sabbath, right, at 7 p.m. Um, Sabbath morning also, we have our Sabbath morning service. You can view that beginning at 9 a.m., and EY in the afternoon around the 4 p.m. hour. Um, also, we can also be a part of our Sunday evening service, evangelistic service, at 7 p.m. on Sunday. So, brethren and friends, be blessed. Stay blessed. I would like you now to bow your heads with me as we end with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercies. Even now, dear God, as we discussed this important topic. We pray, dear Father, that you would help us to understand ultimately our only hope and, and strength as it comes, as it pertains to growing in Christ, is total dependence on Jesus. I pray, dear God, that you would continue to be with Pastor Scott and Pastor Panchu. I pray that you would bless them and enlarge their territories, dear God. I pray that you would be with me also and even our online viewers. I pray, Lord, that you would bless them as well. And I pray that someone, Lord, from today's program may have a better understanding of their experience in Christ. And also someone who probably have not given their heart to Jesus will be convinced by the power of the Holy Spirit to do so before it's eternally too late. Bless us, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. amen. And amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone.